Let's get our gloves on and we'll start getting this headstone taken care of. I mean, it's just such a shame that we've allowed this to happen, but you know, there's reasons behind it. None of them are good reasons, but it is what it is. And now that you've become aware by watching this video, I hope that you'll do something about it in your community and you'll raise the alarm and tell people where you live that this is not right. This is not the way that we are to honor our veterans. Certainly not the ones who are killed in action, who never had the opportunity to live their lives. Most of them have no descendants. Want to be careful working around these stones because we don't want to scratch them. So I have a metal trowel here, but I'm going to be very careful along the edge if I need to uh, dig any of, of this around it. I'm not sure if the stone has uh, sunken or if just the, the leaves from the tree above have built up over time of you know, building up detritus. That may be what's happened here. I'm gonna kind of get some of that away. I don't think we're gonna have to reset the stone. It's, it's set in an angle like the others around it. So the family uh, obviously was careful enough to make sure that it wasn't flat so that it wouldn't turn black so badly. But when nobody cares for it for years on end, it doesn't matter whether it's at an angle or flat or whatever direction, it's gonna grow nasty stuff on it. So we're exposing the stone now, as you can see. And here's where the date starts to show up, August the 6th. August the 6th. 1944. So D-Day happens on June the 6th, June, July, August, two months after D-Day. He's killed in action in Europe, somewhere in France. I bet if we look up the 9th Infantry Division, I bet they landed at Normandy. I don't know if he was there on D-Day. Ooh, a nice cactus said hello to me here. It didn't feel like it stuck me. Yeah, so here we have someone who more than likely land. I don't know, again, I don't know if it was D-Day, but I'm, I'm sure that he landed at Normandy. Probably Utah Beach. That's where a lot of them came in after D-Day. Get the broom out again. Look at that, 1944. You can see that it's been covered so long that that part of the stone is still somewhat white. Look at that. Can you imagine what it must be like to sacrifice your life for your country and then your country allows this to happen to your grave? It's pretty despicable, actually, when we think about it. I mean, shame on us for allowing this to happen, but we can make it right. We can get these stones cleaned by Memorial Day, and then we can care for them in perpetuity going forward so that this doesn't happen again. And we're, we're organizing this movement so that we can right this wrong, and we can educate future generations of why we exist as a free nation and there's no, there's no guarantee that that continues. You need to understand that. Wars happen. The wars have happened. History of mankind. If you want to stay free, you've got to have people like this man who are willing to step up to the front line and, and give their lives for you. Because if they, if they fail, you're no longer free. You're, you're at the uh, mercy of whoever it is that conquers you. You don't understand maybe what that's like because you haven't experienced it, but you need to go read about it. And there's some hellacious stories out there, true stories of what it's like to be captured and what your enemies can do to you. So we've got this stone, uh, we wet it with water so that it can soak up uh, the first layer with water. And then we're gonna apply the, the D2 biological solution. Then we're gonna work it over with a, a soft bristle brush, nylon bristles. We're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes, work on the stone, and we're gonna see hopefully a, a dramatic transition
All right, well, while uh, we were letting this stone soak with the uh, D2 for 10 minutes, I walked the cemetery and I treated all the other stones, the veteran headstones that needed treatment with D2. So they're gonna be looking fantastic within the next few months. It takes a while, but you know, these stones aren't going anywhere. So it's not like we're having to have every one of them immediately clean. We like that. So, you know, I like to do that myself, but I, I don't have time to scrub all of them today. And I don't know that anybody else would ever show up at this particular cemetery. So I figured might as well get it done. Let's go ahead and start uh, scrubbing uh, this grime off of here and just see what kind of transformation we can make. I'm not a fan, as you know, of these ground level markers. They just, they disappear under the ground too easily. They lay flat, so they, they just build up growth and everything lands on it, of course, can't get off of it. I'm pretty impressed with this with this brush. I mean, it's doing a good job. It's uh, again nylon bristles, horse brush. That's the secret. Horse brush. Go to your farm and ranch supply. Of course, you can buy online. Oh yeah, this is going to turn out really nice. What a difference for a a man who was killed in action. Can you imagine what it must be like? to be shot or hit by a shell and bleed out on the battlefield. I mean, it's something that uh, we don't think about that not only do the ones who die in war have to deal with that, the ones who watch them die. So like my grandfather, he was in uh, Europe all the way to the end. Of the 209 men that landed with him at Utah Beach, only one other guy was there standing with him at the end. The rest of them had been killed or wounded so badly that they were shipped home. What he had to see with his own eyes. And he was wounded twice, so he got to see his own blood coming out of his body. Just can't comprehend what that must have been like for my grandfather to have endured. But then to watch your friends bleeding to death nothing you can do for them and when you're in combat i mean unfortunately you're you're fighting for your life and for your lives of your your buddies so there's really no time to stop there's no time out in war you can't say hey time out one of my buddies is hurt here we need to we need to help him that comes after the fighting is subsided or, or somebody maybe a a medic can get to him. There's so many casualties during a battle that there's just not enough medics to go around. Look at that stone now. I mean, it's gonna be much nicer for Memorial Day. So let's get the uh, toothbrush going on this. I like to research these, these men that fought in different wars, different battles, and, and then read up on that battle and just imagine what it must have been like for them to have endured that. And they don't all die, see, that's another thing, is they don't all die, they, uh, but they all have to, have to participate in that. You know, they, they're, they're, they're killing people, they're watching their friends being killed, the destruction, we, we just can't comprehend it. Um, I try to, and that's one of the reasons I come out here and I clean these veteran headstones is because I get it, you know. I, I just have a hard time allowing these stones to look like this when I can do something about it. So I, I know there are good people out there who feel the same way and people are already answering the call and they're getting out in their cemeteries and they're honoring these veterans with clean headstones. 
if you'd like to participate, <laughs> we've got millions of them that need attention. Uh, this is this is just I just started this last year, so we we made some progress, but there's a pandemic that came up right in the middle of starting the momentum. But what we realized was it's the perfect outdoor social distancing activity. I mean, this is something you can do as a community. You can you can schedule these veteran headstone cleaning events. You can go out to the cemetery together, stay socially distanced. And then when you spread out around the cemetery to, to clean veteran headstones, there's nobody right next to you. I mean, they're, they're 20, 30 feet away, but, but you can talk to them. You can have conversations, but usually not a lot of talking goes on during this because it's a moving experience. When you do this, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, I'm talking to you on the camera because otherwise you might get bored just watching me scrubbing these, these numbers and letters, but you get out there and do this yourself one time and I think it'll change your life really. It'll, it'll, it'll give you a whole new perspective on what's really important. And it makes you feel good. It's it, it's a, it's an instant gratification um, to do this. To to watch this stone go, you know, turn from what we saw to what we're seeing now. It, it just makes me feel like I'm doing my part as an American to love my country. Because we're all in this together. I mean, really, you got to understand that. This is not one versus another or one group against another group. We got to stop that. We're all one. One day a country is going to attack us and we're going to have to come together and we're going to know what it's like. And it's not going to be good. But it'd be a whole lot better if we treated each other with the respect and dignity that we can love one another as our neighbors. It's one of the most important things the Bible tells us is to uh, love God with all your heart and, and love your neighbor. may not be related to you. They may not look to you, like you. They may have you know different ideas in life, and but still, they're your neighbor. And God tells us to love our neighbor because there's going to come a time when you're going you're gonna to need that neighbor. And they're going to need you. I think you'll agree that looks a whole lot better than what it did when we started. And this is one of my favorite parts of the process. Try to get as close to a stone. I don't know if there's a base stone down there or not. No, there's not. Get our zip tie, put it around the the base of the flag stick about six inches from the bottom so it stands nice and high in the flag holder. Now he's got an American flag. I hope you'll agree that this is a, uh, a more respectable way to find our veteran graves in our cemeteries. Clean with an American flag. So now James I. Thomas Killed in action August the 6th, 1944, is ready for Memorial Day. So by Memorial Day, I hope you'll join me and get out into your local cemeteries and clean at least one of these veteran headstones. I'm telling you, when you do it the first time, you're going to want to do it again. So you'll probably, you'll probably clean dozens of them, but at least clean one. If we all clean one, we're going to have, we're going to have people standing in line waiting for the opportunity to clean a headstone when it needs to be cleaned again because there's a lot more of us than there are these veteran headstones. I'm Trey Zipperer with By Memorial Day. Like us on Facebook. Click the subscribe button here on YouTube and go to our website VeteranGraves.com and register so that you can enter these veterans as you clean their graves. You can enter all their military information tell their story, upload photos before and after you've cleaned their headstone, and it'll, it'll be a, a, an opportunity for others to, to visit that grave from around the world and pay their respects. VeteranGraves.com